What's up everybody? It's $15 Friday and I am so excited. I hope you guys are too because I am talking about a $15 wine like you've never had before. This is a $15 Cabernet Sauvignon coming from the place next door to where I am right now, Sonoma County. Let's do it. <laughs> I have to be honest, I really feel like I outdid myself this time. I don't even feel like I could maybe continue the series because this is perhaps the greatest $15 wine I've found to date. Uh, no hyperbole, this is outstanding juice for $15 and I am so excited to tell you it is from my own backyard in Sonoma in California. Not a place that we know to be a place for like incredible value. Generally, if it's coming from California, it's got value. It's coming from further south, down in places like the Central Coast and Monterey, uh, sometimes from over in like Amador, but Sonoma, Napa, like not places that we generally think of when we think of value. And I think this is one of those great and rare exceptions that I am so excited to share with you today. So let's talk a little bit about Sonoma. Now, there is an enormous amount to say about Sonoma. It's a huge region. And in fact, I just spent six weeks talking about the Russian River Valley on its own, which is just one AVA within the entire Sonoma County. I mean, there's 18 of them there. It's crazy big. So what you need to know about Sonoma, Sonoma, like I said, big place, Northern California, sits north of San Francisco, and then just to the west of Napa Valley, right over the Mayacamas Range. So obviously on the west, you're gonna be right at the Pacific Ocean, generally where we're finding things like Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, those thinner skin grapes that love to be on the coastal setting there. Sometimes we even find a little Syrah, but rarely are we finding Cabernet Sauvignon. And the reason for that is because it's just a little too cold and temperate for Cabernet. It won't ripen out there, so instead, if we're talking about Cabernet Sauvignon and Zinfandel, we're generally talking about the regions that are a little bit more inland, the regions that are kind of like nestling up into that mountain range there. And that's exactly where we are today. Now, I will tell you, I can't say with any certainty because they won't say it on the list, on the sheet, where this wine is actually specifically coming from as far as which vineyards, but they can give us a sort of general feel as to where we're talking about. And that's gonna be in the Dry Creek Valley and somewhere close to Alexander Valley. Dry Creek Valley, really famous for being the site where Ridge gets grapes from for Lytton Springs. Alexander Valley, really famous for a lot of wineries, most notably probably Silver Oak, uh, Alexander Valley. So what's the wine? Okay, well, one second. This is Angeline. And if you already noticed around the top that it's a screw top, I want you to say it with me one last time. Ready? Screw top is not indicative of? Quality, right, you nailed it, quality. Yeah, not indicative of quality. It is an amazing wine, despite the fact that it is coming from screw top. And as I've mentioned before, I love screw top more than cork in this instance because this is not a wine that we're laying down for a long time. This is a wine that we're gonna be drinking fairly early on and I also love it because you're not gonna have any issues with TCA. So screw top makes it easy to come on and off and we're not gonna have a corked wine. Bingo. Okay, now that that's out of the way. Uh, Angeline, like I said, coming from Sonoma County. Um, they're not listing exactly where this is coming from. They are just giving us a little hints. It is available on Wine Access. And as I said before, Wine Access is reserving some wines for you guys. For $15 Friday so that when I put these videos out there is some quantity available because there's nothing worse than talking about a wine and getting you guys all excited and then you're like what the hell there's no wines available I know I get it I feel like a turd every time so there's wine available I promise uh, and it will be available on wineaccess.com it is $15 it is called Angeline and it is made by a very famous Napa Valley winemaker whose name is Keith Emerson. Probably most famous for making Vineyard 29, which is a very high-end Napa Valley winery that has scored 
100 points, actually kind of recently, um, but also is one of the, one, a classic, a winery that we really, really love um, for being very elegant, but very powerful. And I think that actually really sums up what's happening in this wine here today. And that is crafted by Keith Emerson, who's been the winemaker there for a little while now. When we're talking about Sonoma County Cabernets, a couple of things that I always sort of keep in mind, uh, Sonoma County definitely can get heat in the way of Napa, depending on where it is. And again, like because it's so, so big, you can have a lot of differentiation between AVAs. So when I think of Dry Creek Valley, generally I'm thinking of something that's a little bit more rugged, generally wines of concentration. And I think that's kind of what we have in this glass. I'm gonna pour myself a little bit more, and then I'm gonna set this down. And I should also mention, this is from the 2018 vintage, which was an extraordinary vintage in California, specifically in Napa and Sonoma. Just an amazing, amazing vintage. In fact, a lot of those private label wines that I was talking about from Wine Access, those are from the 2018 vintage, which was really, really bountiful. A huge, wonderful, so much good fruit, we don't even know how to use it, uh, vintage. Uh, so that's what happened in 2018. Let's talk about this wine and what's happening on the nose. Oh, all that great like black and red fruit, so much intensity already, and all of this great earthiness. Mm, I'm loving it. Like bountiful amounts of cassis and rich ripe currant. Um, when I think of California Cabernet, specifically from like Dry Creek Valley and Alexander Valley, this is sort of the picture that comes to mind. Just like kind of like draws you in a little bit. It's really, uh, it's really intense fruit wise, but there's also like great length to this wine. There is like a certain like minerality dustiness going on as well. And again, I really think about Dry Creek Valley as being the place for that great rusticity. But this is not a wine that is shy. It's not a wine where I have to lean into it. It's not a wine where I'm like, mm, I get a little of this, I get a lot of that. It's actually really focused. Um, very deep, very focused. You could kind of like fall into this, almost like you're falling into like a soup of currants and black cherries and all sorts of rich ripe fruits. Mm. If I blind tasted this wine, not a chance I'd be in $15 camp. Not a chance. Minimum, I'd be 40 to 50 bucks for sure. This is a stellar, stellar wine. I mean, obviously coming from grapefruit source, but obviously being made by someone who knows what he's doing. He knows balance. And I think when we get into this $15 territory where, which is what I alluded to before, you know, there's a lot of garbage in here. There's a lot of manipulation. There's a lot of masking, a lot of makeup that happens here, but this is really great, pure expression of the fruit. Um, but it's big and it's rich and it's dense and it's coming from the site and from the fruit, not from something else. Uh, you can really feel just like the pure expression of this wine and that's really what sets this wine apart from a lot of other $15 Cabernets um, that you would find elsewhere because wines, especially Cabernets coming from California, a lot of times what you're getting in that price bracket is that manipulation. And this is this is deep, it's expressive, it's pure, um, but it's so, so rich and like mm, muscular. Outstanding. I mean, all that great dark, dark fruit, a little bit of that earthiness in the back end, not a lot of spiciness. So if you're not someone that really loves spice, like we were getting from the Paxton Shiraz or from the a little bit in the, in the carré. If you really just love fruit with maybe just a, like a back end of just a slight earthiness, like that sort of um, kind of reminds me, like it's a potting soil, um, which I know is like kind of gross, but it just sort of anchors it. It makes it so that you're not just like chomping into like a big bowl of cherries and there's nothing else underneath. So kind of like the carré where we, where we had all that great rich ripe fruit and then the Syrah sort of underneath of it to give it that spicy backbone. Think of that backbone there as uh, as the cradle, but think of it in more of like the earthy uh, earthy style of things, if that makes sense. I'm so impressed by this wine. This actually has a little bit of um, like sandalwood, uh, which I think, I think in the wine access write up, but that great sort of, when I say earthy, that's kind of where I'm leaning towards, that sandalwood, that sweet, sort of salty, savory wood uh, thing going on. That's sort of what I'm getting, but it's a very complimentary flavor. It's not the primary thing that's happening. Um, texturally, I'm talking about texture. It's like my favorite thing to talk about, texturally. Where are we with this wine? It's rich, it's round, 
but it's not cloying. So it's coating the mouth. But then as always, what we love about wines that are like really big and rich and tense, especially the ones with minerality, is it's going back in and cleaning up after itself. Food pairings, what am I gonna eat with this wine? Well, it's cab. So, you know, grab your steak, grab your stew, grab um, any of your big hearty meats, and that is gonna go best. Of course, if you're sitting at home and you don't have that, um, this is totally delicious on its own. This is well, this is poised for being a wine that you can just sit and watch a little TV, uh, click on something great on Netflix. Also, if you're loving something on Netflix, comment below and tell me what it is because I need some new things. Um, but yeah, crack this bottle and drink it alone, drink it with food. I think you're gonna be just fine either way, but the minerality and these, the, the great lift of this wine is really what's gonna make this a great wine to pair with food. So I'm not afraid of it either way. It's certainly not a wine that needs food, but it's certainly a wine that would enjoy its company. Um, and with that, I'm gonna go enjoy some company of my own because dinner's upstairs and I'm hungry now that we've just talked about all that. I can't speak enough to this wine. This is outstanding, $15. It's available now on Wine Access. I suggest you go get it. Enjoy your weekend. Happy Friday, everyone. I hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, please let me know by hitting the like button. And if you're enjoying what I'm doing in general, and I hope that you are, please subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate it. It helps me out. I loved hanging out with you guys today. I'll see you soon. Bye.